How do you do, my friends, abundantly, many, elsewhere and everywhere? Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, I am the professor, Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our principal business today is more on Bernoulli, because the Bernoulli life and work enchant me. You remember in an earlier program where I collapsed a can with a tea tube. I wanted to do it again and our pressure failed us. So now I'm going to do it again and show you something else. Here is the tea tube. Here is the air. There it is, beautiful. I reduced the pressure in the tube and the atmosphere in excess squeezed it together. Now that's one operation. Operation number two. I am out of Yankee country, New England, and we are conservative, and if this can has not sprung a leak, I want to prepare it for use another time, and so I'm going to blow it up. There it is all nicely recovered, bespeaking the frugality of my nature. Isn't that terrific? Isn't that terrific? Yep. <clears throat> Wonderful. <clears throat> so you see how much fun I have with the Bernoullis. Consider the following. You remember when we talked about our beloved Michael Faraday, and I had a coil of wire connected to a galvanometer, and I put a bar magnet in, in and out and in and out, and the meter needle went so and so and so and so. I was generating, I was producing an alternating current. Now, that's a hard job, coil of wire magnet. Hard job. We make it easier as follows. Let me wind on a rectangular frame a coil of wire. I wind a coil of wire on a rectangular frame. Let me equip the frame with a handle like an old-fashioned grindstone so I can turn the coil on this horizontal axis. Now remember, we had the magnet moving into the coil. I could just as well have had the coil move on to the magnet. So, I am going to put some horseshoe magnets around this coil. One side of the horseshoe magnet is on the other side of this board, and the front side is on the front side of the board. I have done just that. Here is an array of horseshoe magnets, and inside there's a coil, and I'm going to turn the coil, just as I said here. And the coil moving in the magnetic field is connected at its extremities to a lamp, which I can now light. I want to first show you that that is an alternating current, because I have here somewhere, but I don't have here somewhere, I thought I did a two-pole lamp. I'll come to that another time. Let me put this ordinary incandescent lamp back. Well, wait a minute. Maybe this is. Oh, I don't think it is. Let me see. No, it's an ordinary filament lamp, but let's see how bright it is. Yes. Now the magnetic field is so strong and I am turning so fast to make the lamp light so bright. I'm going to take this strong Alnico magnet and assist these which are here in the following way. Now watch it. Oh, no, there's no lamp at all. It is obvious that I have put the poles of this opposing the poles of that so that the field has been neutralized, essentially. Let me turn the magnet around. Aha! Now let me do it. And I guarantee on oath I say that if what I said in the first place is true, now the lamp will light more brightly. Aha! There it is. Proof complete. So, you see how wonderful a scheme of things Mr. Faraday produced and I thank you for watching.